producer was there and a piano player was there to record with us. And we got to know this piano player and he gave us encouragement and we watched his energy and we fed off his energy and he was bouncing off the wall before the day was <laughs> over. And he, first time I ever saw any skinny person drink a Red Bull energy. He didn't need that. But what a blessing he was for us. Now, it has come full circle because when we were over there, we said, if you ever hear of a piano player that would like to play with our group, if you can find someone brave enough to do that, we would love to have a piano player. Well, lo and behold, Steve gets a phone call one night, and this person says, I found you a piano player. He's only 15. <laughs> he doesn't drive. His parents still drive him. But maybe they could bring him down to your church and perhaps he can audition for you. We said, we don't care if he's six. We don't care if he's 60. We'd love to hear this piano player. So one night, the piano player came and we said, oh, you are young. Average age down, quite considerable. <laughs> so he came in and played the piano, and before long, I think the roles were reversed as we were auditioning for Grant Frederick to play with us. And the piano player that introduced us and who played for us on our first CD is no other than Mr. Andrew Ishi from Law, Mississippi. He has played with the Dixie Echoes, the Palmetto State Quartet, and the Kingsman Quartet. Piano extraordinaire, Mr. Andrew Ishi.
I understand the little background music cut off there at the end of that, so um, it's not a problem. I'll play the piano. I'll play plenty of piano for you. Uh, guys, I don't know if we need to take uh, maybe a look at that. Let's just uh, let's investigate a little bit uh, while I talk for just a second. And uh, I want to tell you folks, I'm glad to be with you. And I'm glad I have a chance to catch my breath after that song. How many of you knew that song? It's an old Albert E. Brumley song. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. I love the song that we started with tonight uh, on the piano and the organ. You guys are fantastic. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I actually, uh, I, my family and I, we've attended a few different kinds of churches throughout my life. And I, I grew up a good bit in, in an Assembly of God church. And the organ and the piano was all we had. And we did that kind of music like you were doing right there. And uh, there's a there's a red back hymn book. Yeah. And it's called the... Uh, Everybody just calls it the rhythm, but it's the Church of God hymn. Right. Those songs are sanctified right there. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that song's in there. Uh, where can I go but to the Lord? But I'll tell you a little story about that song while we're taking a little pause. I'm from Laurel, Mississippi. That's where I grew up. I, I've lived other places. I lived in the mountains of North Carolina for a while. And my wife and I have uh, moved back to Laurel back in 2005. Now, it's a special place in relationship to that song because the man who wrote it, J.D. Coates, lived in Laurel, Mississippi. He grew up there, and uh, his home place. Still, and I uh, have been playing together at church for many years. Uh, we just lost him. He just moved to Alabama. Uh, not, he hadn't quite gone home to be with the Lord, but that's pretty close. <laughs> <Isn't it? laughs> I mean, he's in God's country now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, J.D. Coates. Um, uh, his his grandson was not a. Uh, just let me just see if this plays. You heard that? Didn't you? Okay, great. Uh, that'll set, set my mind at ease. Yeah, J.D. never took a dime for any of his songs. And uh, he, he wrote another song, I know you know. I down deep in my soul, a melody rings, I'm a wing in my way. He wrote that. And uh, he, he decided uh, years ago that he, he wrote gospel music, so I'm not going to, I don't want to charge people to sing my songs. So, um, so his publishing company has made all the money all these years at, at J.B. Now, but what a... What an amazing coincidence that, uh, that you'd start with that. It just made me feel right at home. Well, my name's Andrew Ishi, and I play the piano. I started playing the piano when I was eight years old. I, uh, my dad plays. Now, he's, he's not good like Grant. He's, uh, he's a, a real ham and egg. He's just the chord and, and a note below kind of player. Now, you folks know music here. I can tell that you do. That's why you like to get together and hear these songs, because... Uh, because we've got a lot of music lovers in this place right here. Dad was like that. Loved quartet music, loved gospel music. Got the encyclopedia set out and taught himself to play the piano by the old shaped notes. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. You guys know what those are. Well, that's the way he learned to play. And all my life, I never caught a good show on TV because him and mom, they'd be around the piano singing and I'd have my ear up to the the speaker on the TV trying to, to listen to what was going on there, but pretty soon my ears started to drift the other way and I got over by the piano and I'd stand at the top with one note just like that while Dad would play and Mom would sing. Dad sang bass and Mom sang alto. If you've never heard a bass alto do well, Well, Dad, uh, when I turned eight, he decided that my hands were big enough, and so I had been begging for a while for him to show me some chords on the piano. He showed me E flat, A flat, and B flat, and I was going to learn to play my first song the next day. So before bed every night, we'd read a Bible story, and we'd pray. And my mom and I, we knelt down and I said, oh, Lord, I want to be a piano player. Would you, would you make me a, a piano player? If, if, if you do, I promise I'll use my gift to honor you. And so the next day, I was able to play by ear. I took those three chords and learned to play many songs, just those three. And uh, the, the knowledge of, of how things work came kind of backwards for me. I learned to play the piano, and then the teachers would come along and tell me what I was doing. So uh, <laughs> that's just uh, that's just God working through me, and I'm so glad I get to share that gift with you today. Now, I played on the road with some, some different groups. played with the, uh, the Kingsman Quartet. We traveled all over the United States and Canada, and with the Palmetto State Quartet, we sang in other foreign countries like Mexico, and we, sang in, uh, we actually sang in Northern Ireland and in Scotland and in Louisiana. And out of the way places all over. And hey, I started traveling with these groups and I said, these singers, you guys are so amazing singing that four-part harmony. I don't know where I would fit in, but I'm just going to pray again. It worked the first time. God, you, you've blessed me to play the piano. Would you make me a great singer? And you know, God said no. <laughs> I did. Uh, I felt in my spirit like he spoke to me, though, 
and said, son, I'll give you an audience that don't know the difference. <laughs> this may not be the crowd. <laughs> you know what I mean? This may not be the one. Hey, hey with that in mind, I'm, I'm going to skip ahead. I'm gonna, I want to sing a song for you. Here's a song we used to do when I was with the Kings, one of our most popular songs. You can kind of snap along or clap along. It's a song about going to church. You probably know it. It goes like this. Excuses, excuses, you'll hear them every day. Now the devil, he'll supply them if from church you stay away. When people come to know the Lord, the devil always loses. So to keep those folks away from church, he offers them excuses. Now in the summer, it's too hot. And in the winter, it's too cold. And in the springtime, when the weather's just right, you find someplace else to go. Well, it's up to the mountains or down to the beach to visit some old friend. Or just to stay home and kind of relax and hope some of the kin folks will start dropping in. <laughs> well, those church benches are too hard, and that choir sings way too loud, and you know how nervous you get when you're sitting in a great big crowd. And the doctor told you, you ought to watch those crowds. They'll set you back. But you go to that old ball game because you say it helps you. Relax. <laughs> but by work time Monday morning, I <laughs> hate Sunday morning back in Sunday night, but work time Monday morning, you think it's quite alright. One of the children has a cold. Pneumonia, do you? So while it's catching you up, well, the whole family will have to stay home just to blow that poor kid's nose. <laughs> excuses, excuses, you'll hear them every day. Now the devil here supply them if in church you stay away. When people come to know the Lord, the devil always loses. So to keep those folks away from church, he offers them excuses. Well, the preacher, he's too young. Or maybe he's too old. His voice is much too quiet. And sometimes he gets too bold. And when he gets too quiet, then suddenly he'll get too loud. He ought to have more dignity, or else he's way too proud. <laughs> well, the sermons, they're too long, never too short. <laughs> he ought to preach the word with dignity instead of stomp and snort. Well, that preacher we've got must be the world's most stuck-up man. Because one of the ladies told me the other day, why, he wouldn't even shake my hand. Excuses, excuses, you'll hear them every day. Now the devil, he'll supply them if in church you stay away. When people come to know the Lord, the devil always loses. So to keep those folks away from church, he offers them excuses. So to keep those folks away from church, he offers them excuses. Stand up. Let's just sing one together. I think you'll know this. Why don't you stand? It'd be good. It'd be good. Get you in a good singing mood. Victory in Jesus. I heard no Yeah. 
A lot of songs about going to church tonight. Maybe the Lord's trying to tell y'all something about tomorrow. <laughs>